This video will focus on the sweep and pipe 3D commands in Fusion 360. Provided on the screen at the moment is an example of a sweep command. The sweep tool is useful when a shape or a profile needs to be extruded along a path. So think about the metal tubes on a chair leg, how they sweep around the body of the chair. As the command states, when we go to create and sweep, sweeps a sketch profile or planar face along a selected path. It is best to begin with the path sketch and I suggest going through and drawing the ground plane from the origin or the axis line. So what we can see on the right here is I've highlighted the sketches, so if I turn off body 2, we can see that this sweep has been created by this profile, and then it's swept along that path. And that's what we've simply done there. We're going to quickly open up this tab here and create a similar design to it. So what we first of all want to go through and do is create our sketch of all well, actually I've gone through and created the path just to make things a little bit quicker and I'll talk about some nuances with the path shortly that is best starting upon the origin or along the axis line so the red line or the green line and also be beginning probably with the ground plane I tend to find is easier now we want to go through and create that profile this so the shape at the front of it any shape can be swept. This is the function that makes it more powerful than the pipe command. So what we're going to do now is go create sketch and now be creating on this front face. Because the uh, profile and the path cannot be drawn upon the same axis or the same view angle. They need to be perpendicular or right angle to each other. So here we're going to be selecting this front face, so then we can essentially stick it on the front of that path. I'm just going to create a circle. That will do, and now we can finish sketch. We now have our path, and we have our profile that is going to sweep along. So now we're just going to go create, and then sweep. What it states here is we can change the type and we can change it to guides and rails, but I'll focus on guides and rails in another video. So single path is going to be best. The profile is that profile or shape at the front, and the path is a path that we've gone through and created. Now notice we've got a few additional um, things that we can go through and alter. So the distance is 1, so 100%. So if you want it 50%, put in 0.5. You can also be selecting and dragging it backwards. We'll go back to 100% as we follow it around. The other selection, if I deselect this, I can deselect certain areas that it gets to. So we can deselect certain um, paths or lines within that area. I was all Go back to that and push that back to hopefully 100%. This is where sometimes we have some issues. And this issue is mainly being caused by this right angle. So if you've got something, it's going to be best to use a soft fillet or have it slightly curved around and you'll notice that the sweep function will work a lot better. Now, I'm sort of struggling here with that. Why is that not wanting to do it? Oh, I haven't selected it, that's why. There we go. Other things we can go through and do is change the taper angle. You might be able to change that to 5, so it obviously tapers down a little bit. We'll go back to 0 for that. Uh, we can have it twist, so it will look like more of a corkscrew. Um, and we might change that with the, maybe we'll change it to rectangular shortly. The other thing is primarily, most of the time you're going to be using perpendicular. Now, why that is because often you get errors when you go with parallel. So if I change this to parallel, we will just move our camera angle around here so it becomes a little bit clearer. And now if I continue this along, we can see what's causing there and that's why it's causing that error where that profile face is not rotating upon the line and being right angled to the line, 
it's continuing on with a parallel to that front face initially. So I'll change that back to perpendicular. And let's just go distance of one. Go OK there. As I said, let's try and change it so we can see how it twists. So we'll go back to sketch two. Let's just quickly edit that to make it rectangular. Um, a little, little bit larger than what it is. So now when we change our sweep, edit feature, uh, profiles, let's delete that. It's like this is our profile and now we'll be able to put a twist angle onto it. So let's go uh, 60 degrees. Now, once again, it's throwing up an error and it's probably to do with this curve or this right angle here. So let's see where it's having that effect. Here we go. So once it gets around there, it starts getting a bit distorted. So that's an example of when we're applying a twist to it. Now let's, quit, let's quickly look at the pipe command. So the pipe command is similar. It can be easier to use, but it is more restrictive to the um, dealing with different profiles than what we can sweep. So with the sweep command, we can essentially sweep any shape or any type of profile. Whereas the pipe command, when we go create, we've obviously I've already created my path and down to pipe, as it says, creates a solid pipe that follows a selected path. Now notice, I've already, oh, actually I better go through and select my path first of all. Not sure why I can do that individually. But anyway, that works. Now we can go through and change it from triangular to circular. We can change the, dis, uh, sorry, the selection size. So let's make it 20 so it's a bit more visible. And we can also uh, do this, we can go through and hollow it out as it's already applied here. And so there are some more restrictions in terms of primarily the shapes that can be or profiles that can be swept are purely that um, circular, triangular and square. Hopefully this has been a informative video that's introduced you to the sweep and the pipe command. Thanks very much.